And now we'll move on to uh, another uh, interesting speaker, uh, Dr. Mat'ib al uh, He He graduated from the medical college at King Saudi University and finished his residency in radiology and diagnostic imaging in 2008. Uh, and uh, he worked in many uh, leading hospitals uh, within the area. Uh, in 2009, he had a one-year fellowship in advanced MRI imaging of abdomen and pelvis uh, at Center for Magnetic Resonance Investigations uh, in, uh, in Yorkshire, UK. And he has been, he also worked in Minnesota, my clinic in Rochester, uh, and he is the director for the program for body imaging fellowship at King Saudi University Medical City and head for the exam committee at Saudi Commission for Health Specialties in Radiology Body Imaging Fellowship. Uh, uh, Dr. Mitrib uh, delivers uh, presentations and trainings, hands-on trainings to teach radiologists how they can import data themselves into their own systems and design and, com and, and, and program pattern recognition and AI, artificial intelligence based systems to enable physicians to be able to manipulate images and explore images for research purposes. Uh, and without further ado, I would leave you with uh, Dr. Mitab uh, to share with us his experience and knowledge in this area. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Mitab al -Kwair. I work as a consultant radiologist and imaging informaticist at King Saudi University Medical City here in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. I would like to thank the uh, chairman and the organizing committee for inviting me to this uh, conference. Without any further ado, uh, I'm delighted to present uh, this topic, role of artificial intelligence in evaluating malignancy in radiology imaging. In the current time, uh, AI is uh, similar to human in performance, if not over uh, passing it. Uh, now, saying that this would be true for all tasks that is very specific, let's say in detecting lesion uh, rather than deriving differential diagnosis. A good analogy for that is uh, having a calculator is outperforming humans in uh, calculating arithmetic operations like multiplications, divisions, that doesn't mean it's going to replace mathematicians. Uh, the same thing would happen in AI for radiology. Now, it's very important to have an idea that most of uh, imaging uh, literature related to uh, radiology are dealing with uh, CNN, deep learning, or what we call convolutional neural network, which is a subset of deep learning, which is a subset of machine learning, which all of them are under the umbrella of artificial intelligence or AI. Now, basically, there are two paradigms in uh, our practice as a, a radiologist dealing with AI. We have what we call the traditional machine learning in the upper row, and we have the deep learning on the lower uh, row here. Say we have a chest radiograph where there is a lesion, for machine learning, usually there would be a human or uh, an expert domain uh, specialist that would uh, craft the features. For example, for me as a radiologist, if the lesion is smooth, this would be a benign. If it is irregular, this would be more of malignant. Also, we can extract a, t a texture, whether if it is homogenous, that would be, uh, let's say, uh, assist or more of benign and if it is uh, heterogeneous this would be more of a malignant once we extract what we call the features we could later on categorize it whether is it a benign or a malignant whereas deep learning all what we have to do is to load multiple huge uh, images of malignant and also another data set of benign one and uh, feed it with multiple layers of uh, uh, neural nodes, the computer would derive the feature by itself without the human interference. So here you need a lot of data so that the computer would uh, make sure, make uh, enough features to make uh, a proper output for us here would be a benign versus a malignant. Usually in a workflow uh, that 
we're going to obtain an image from a modality say it can be a CT an MR or a PET we apply uh, pre-processing uh, operations like uh, smoothing the image to get rid of the noise or uh, removing the artifact once we have uh, an image we apply some uh, image-based tags that can be utilized by AI for example we could use it to detect lesion say from a mammal or from a lung or from a brain after we detect the lesion we could segment it and do volume extraction this would help us to monitor the lesion if if it has regressed or progressed also one of the uses of um, AI is to predict whether it's a, a benign or a malignant and last but not least it can be utilized to let's say uh, derive the genotype and whether the lesion is going to be radio sensitive or chemo sensitive this would help us to plan our uh, management now in machine learning as we say we have multiple brain uh, let's say uh, samples of images a human would extract the texture or craft the features like uh, the edges once we have all these intensities uh, all these features we build the algorithm uh, as we're gonna see in the next slide the most important basically are three types on uh, radiology the random forest the support vector machine and the K neighboring uh, with the model we can feed it with any new image and try to compare it with the existing uh, training data set and predict the output whether it's a benign or a malignant so those are the most commonly used in radiology the random forest support vector machine KNN once we apply these features the edges the intensities uh, we derive the model to predict a specific outcome um, whether volumetry or detecting lesions or this is uh, benign versus malignant now in deep learning we have multiple layers of neurons hence it's called deep and the feature will be derived from this neural network no need for a human being to extract such features like those an important things to be aware of to develop an AI model most of the time is spent in data curation it's not programming uh, it's not refining the algorithm all what we spent is to clean up the data and label it properly so if you have a good data set with proper labeling you could build AI a nice article that uh, described the steps how to uh, prepare data for machine learning and AI at uh, radiology published uh, in February 2020 uh, most importantly to make sure that you de-identify your images uh, for patient uh, privacy these are examples of uh, publicly available repositories of uh, um, images of cancer whether from CT, MR or PET you could easily take them and uh, build your own uh, model out of them now what are the potential roles of AI as we said it's very important we could use it uh, for image pre-processing we could use AI to reduce the noise or the artifact or enhance the resolution of the image we could use it to detect lesion segment lesion and extract the volume and the maximum diameter hence help us in uh, monitoring the therapy we could use it to categorize lesion whether it's a benign or malignant uh, we discussed the monitoring also we could use it to predict if the tumor is having a specific genotype let's say KRAS mutation or so forth here are some uh, example images let's say once you obtain an image you have very noisy image you could denoise it with AI you could extract organ volume uh, you could detect a lesion uh, decide whether it's a, a benign or malignant monitor if it is regressed or progressed so those most important tasks detection segmentation classification and prediction all articles usually agree that more the proper architecture for detection is to use convolutional neural network or CNN for segmentation use variable types of UNET 
For classification, we use the fully connected uh, neural network. And for prediction, we use also CNN. It's very important for uh, a reviewer or a researcher or a clinician to be aware of the proper performance metrics. If you are dealing, let's say, with segmentation, make sure they have reported the DICE score or Jackard score or the other name called intersection of union. For classification and prediction, rock curve is the most optimum. Here are some examples of different architecture for classification. We're going to use a, a fully connected neural network uh, for detection. We're going to use convolutional neural networks. It's going to draw a box about the metastatic liver. For segmentation, this is an example of uh, unit shape uh, neural network that help us to uh, make uh, masks upon the uh, lesions. Again, you could have multiple data sets freely available from such a site called Cancer Imaging Archive. And AI can be used uh, for malignancy uh, detection and evaluation, whether in thorax, abdomen, mammography, brain, or even radiation oncology, if you are interested in uh, segmenting the organ of interest. Now, how does AI uh, see image, or let's say, how do we build AI? To understand more clearly, this is an example of brain metastatic lesion. This white thing over the left hemisphere, this is the uh, brain metastatic lesion. For computers, they see the pixel value rather than um, an image. To make it clear, let's load our Excel sheet here. For us as a human, we see just a bunch of numbers. We cannot comprehend what are they. But let's say I would apply a color scale so that the lower the pixel value, the darker it gets. The higher the pixel value, the brighter it gets. Now you could see some change of the image. Let's zoom it out a bit. You could see or appreciate the image that we saw in the prior presentation. And if I zoom over the sorry, the uh, metastatic lesion, you could see it's a circular white thing where the uh, higher pixel value are having a brighter uh, appearance. Let's go back to our presentation. This is an example uh, from our hospital. We developed an AI model to detect uh, prostate lesion, whether they are benign or malignant. For that, uh, we have a radiology resident that have extracted the lesion here, convert the pixel value. As you can see, the lower the pixel, the darker, the higher the pixel, the brighter. Uh, say that we want to study the homogeneity of that lesion. Let's say well, how many pairs of a pixel value of 1 is adjacent to a pixel value of 2. In other words, pixel 1 adjacent to 2, we have 3 pairs. So we could say there are 3 pairs. So this matrix is what we call gray level co-occurrence matrix. We could normalize it and derive different features out of it. Now these numbers help computer to say whether the lesion is homogeneous or heterogeneous. Also we have extracted first order statistics like the mean pixel value, the variance, the skewness, the kurtosis. And from that we derived different uh, uh, image maps like entropy. And here you could see on your right hand, uh, in the right here, a uh, significant malignant looking lesion delineated into a yellow margin, while here is a benign looking lesion. Those features that we have extracted shows uh, significant versus insignificant or malignant versus benign lesions. Building a, a model using randomized uh, forest classifier, we have uh, a sensitivity of almost 81.8% uh, for detecting malignant lesion with area and the rock curve of 91.3%. Uh, 
Now this draws us into something called genomics, radiomics, and radiogenomics. Uh, many uh, diseases are determined by genome. Radiomics means to identify properties in image that reflect disease or prognosis, while radiogenomics is to identify genomics out of uh, radiological images. We'll show you some examples. Uh, now in our hospital, we have managed to also uh, predict uh, brain tumors, whether they are soft or uh, hard. This would help the surgeon uh, to plan his surgery. If it is soft, they will do only uh, suction. While if it is hard, they have to do uh, craniotomy and debulking. This would take one hour procedure. Here it will take six to seven hours. For that, we have extracted the features and we build a classifier based on neural network and we reached uh, a rock curve of 87% in predicting if this is a firm or a soft. This is another example uh, from uh, our hospital. We have built uh, a classifier to predict benign from malignant lesion out of CT scan. Now many ladies, they do have uh, mammography, so we use mammography as our gold standard as well as the pathology and we asked our radiologist to trace up those lesions for example this lady she has a malignant invasive ductal carcinoma in her right breast and a benign fibroadenoma in her left breast and based on ai it can predict this is a malignant and this is a benign uh, without doing a mammography another example we built is also to predict if colonic wall thickening is due to colon cancer or uh, chronic diverticular uh, disease. And lately, within the last decade, there is a huge literature that utilized neural networks, specifically convolution neural network, either for mass detection or classification as a malignant, as you can see here in this uh, review. Now, what regards radiomics, there is an interesting article that helped to determine gliomas, whether they have uh, IDHY type or mutation. This would help them to do uh, management and they could predict if the patient is going to have a good prognosis or a bad prognosis. And for that, they used uh, CNN with uh, multi-resolution augmented they reached a, sen a sensitivity of 93% with an accuracy of 0.88. <coughs> they have also used ResNet 50 to have a sensitivity of uh, 95%. Now, very important aspect that we should be aware of. Uh, make sure that you have a standardized method to obtain your image before running them into an AI. There was a tremendous literature that have studied the uh, drawbacks of radiomics and AI, as you can see here, for CT study post contrast, all these literature have uh, been done also for PET as well as for MRI. But we can summarize all these literature into this slide. All these factors you have to make sure it's standardized for acquisition or for uh, using your AI. So let's say if I built an AI out of a specific vendors, it might be not generalizable to another vendor. For that, this literature I have found those are very important factors to be uh, utilized or uh, standardized. Before I conclude, a key consideration for all of us to be aware of, make sure that that AI has been built using a training, validation, and a test set. Make sure that there was an external test set that had been utilized. Also make sure it's been uh, run in multi-vendor modalities so that it would be much easier or very generalizable uh, for the future. Uh, make sure also you benchmark it with the radiology experts. Uh, there is an important aspect for us as a consumer if in your hospital. Uh, some of those applications have an FDA approval or what we call they being granted software as a medical device. This helps you at least to guarantee that it's been tremendously tested uh, from organizing committees like the European Commission or the FDA. 
with that, uh, I conclude my talk and thank you immeasurably for your kind attention. Please, uh, you could reach me at my email seen below here. And thank you.